Oh my goodness, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Wait, wrong thing. <laughs> and there's the homie. The Hold homie on, let me get up. <laughs> How you doing, Moochie? I'm all right. Hold on, let me get back. Let me change my background. Let me come on. Do your thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take some time to um, just say to the families of the people in Buffalo, New York, to the families of the folks in California, and to the people that was shot in the shooting in Milwaukee. Um, this channel's heart goes out to all of you people. And I know it all seems so very frustrating that these same things keep happening. These same issues continue to happen. We're seeing hatred in the black community, the Asian community, and then just bitter punk ass losers. A subscriber of mine sent me a message I just read. He was actually in the store in Buffalo, New York. Oh my God. He was telling me that he felt, he saw his life flash right before him. He was telling me that he seen white dude apologize to white people and did not even shoot at him. He's seen it. And he said he's never really been all that afraid of anything in his life until that moment. That moment wow. shook him. And he wants some answers. He's, he's going through emotions. He's sad. He's bitter. He's frustrated. And I just told him, you know, I would say something nice. He don't want me to say his name or anything like that. But on behalf of this channel, its subscribers, all the various people that you see come on my channel, we all support you. We support those families. We support doing something to change what has happened. I mean, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, nobody needs to be walking around in public with a high-power assault rifle. Nobody. There, there's no sense in that. It makes zero sense. You can, and I'm not saying take your gun from you. If you want to keep your little pop gun, keep your shit at home in the basement. But walking around in a public domain, no. The first thing that came out of one of the cops' mouths was they couldn't do anything to this boy who's in riot gear running around with an assault rifle and a magazine that was illegal, but the cop didn't know the magazine was illegal because... He wasn't doing anything illegal. But if we do something to make it illegal for your asses to be running around here like you at some fake-ass Comic-Con, a Call of Duty shooting event, some cosplay for Call of Duty, I guarantee you we would nip some of that shit in the bud because it makes no sense. I'm sad. I'm mad. I worry about my life. I have a young child now. I worry about my wife. And... When I hear people that are basically an extension of my family subscribers get up here and tell me they was in an event, that hits home. That hits home. So if you guys don't do anything else, get out there and vote. And having said that, Moochie, what's up? What's up to my brother in um, Baltimore area, Modem Killer? What's up, brother? How you doing? And to all the other 35 people we've got in the we've got in watching us, please say something in the chat. Let us know how you feel about. This show that we're watching that shows a little bit of corruption on the other side of the badge. And joining me tonight is the homegirl Moochie. J Mo should be here in a few minutes. How you feeling, hey, Moochie? You live right up there in New York. How you doing? Oh, that's upstate New York, but this is something else. This whole thing is something else. It's 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 horrible. Um I you seen the footage I sent you. So Yeah. It was like he was playing a video game, literally. That's what I said. Like, it damn, like you want to be playing uh, Call, Call of, of Duty. Duty? Yeah, like it, mother... it's scary because they're already trying to use this mental illness thing, and he's blatantly a racist because he had a manifest. Lord have mercy, Moochie. He knew how to get up there. So, what mental issues did you have? You drove hours away. To go to where no where it was nothing but black people to do this. And did you see that he wrote white lives matters on his gun? Yes. The person who's a subscriber that was in the grocery store said he saw firsthand this boy point his gun at a white guy 
and said, I'm sorry, and then pointed it at black people. I saw the video. I believe I, I know it happened. Not, I saw the video. Only, I'm sorry. Not like he, only like that, he bumped into somebody. Not only that, Moochie, but how the hell is it convenient for the right wing racists and anybody to blame mass shootings on mental illness? Well, let me tell you something that created mental illness that they used to tell black people, shut the hell up, we don't want to hear it. Fucking slavery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The tentacles of slavery. And when we used to talk about mental health, you didn't want to hear that shit. You told black men that there's something wrong with you or if just you have get mental over health. it. That's what they yeah, get always over it. tell us. Get over it. Get over it. And now that your little white sons and daughters is out here committing mass homicide, we all of a sudden supposed to say for your sake is mental illness? Man, F that. And don't be trying to say it's because of Corona he's got mental illness. Hell, yeah. everybody was locked down. Mm -hmm. And I don't see everybody out here and their mama going breaking crime, breaking laws, committing crime, putting genocide on another race. I don't see that shit. So ladies and gentlemen, take your ass to vote. Talk to your local Congress people. Talk to your local city council. Hell, you can get them easy and say it's easy to just say, why the hell does anybody need to be running around in public with an assault rifle? You ain't got to take it away from them. If they want to keep their little toys, fine. Keep it in the basement. But on them streets, if a cop see you with an assault rifle, your ass should be pulled over, detained, and sent home, or at the very least, checked on. Here's my boy, J-Mo. I just wanted to be what's, uh, oh, what's, uh, what's up? What's up, everybody? How y'all doing, man? Hey, what's we up? good, what's Jay. How, how about yourself? Up, I just wanted to bid a Come farewell right. to an area culture, though. Okay, what'd you say, Mooch? Aaron Salter Jr., the um, the security guard, the armed security guard <laughs> that actually shot back at him, yeah, man. but he was unable to penetrate the uh. The, his the, his the, Teflon, his armor. So yeah, it was yeah. like he was shooting, but it didn't help. But he gave his life; he sacrificed trying to save people. It might have bought people time in regards mm. to that, but it's a, it's an unfortunate thing that happened this weekend. You talking about exactly. the uh, shooting and uh, yeah, in New York, yes, yeah. A subscriber of mine wrote me J Mo that was actually in the grocery store. Oh, just wow. just sent me a message. Scared as hell. Male. He was right there when the dude was pointing gun at white people turning it. He saw people get mowed down. Oh. I mean, dude, dude is just shook right now. And of course, my people, I'm not one who's afraid to tell someone, bro, go seek a counselor. Don't deal with this shit by yourself. No. Don't deal with it by yourself. It is, it, it is nothing wrong with you going to get help and having someone talk to you to help order your steps, to help be a guide rail for you to get control of your car because you still let the wheel. So don't feel like they doing anything extra. They're helping giving you steps, a guide for you to keep yourself in check before you do something that you might regret on another day. But, um, yeah, that's me I'm just personally, not under I'm oh, a, ahead, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Me personally, I'm a registered gun owner. And everywhere I go, I take a gun with me. <laughs> um, even when I was with you, Lamont, I was trapped, man. I mean, like every single where I go, um, whether it's Walmart or to any function, because you never know what may happen. And it, it feels a little better knowing you could at least do something, fight back. Then and see, go ahead. I'm sorry. The defense. It may not have penetrated or worked. I do got armor piercing rounds, <laughs> but uh, you never know. But I would and rather have, have the option to be able to fight back than not. And I think that if more people were armed citizens, that they these people wouldn't be able to do this mass shoot. Imagine he walked in there and tried to do that and 30 people pulled up on him. You know what I'm saying? Then he might have got one or two, but you got 30 people shooting back at your ass because everybody is armed legal gun owners. 
then I think that would have stopped it. But a lot of people are able to prey on people because they know that it's going to be nobody that can retaliate for the most part. So, And I got a CCW too, Jay. I I got a CCW too, Jay, but I I don't take my gun with me everywhere I go. And the first thing they told me in my um, concealed carry class was anyone who is – who penis is so small they have to show you their penis size via their gun – by walking around brandishing it everywhere, it's basically a walking target. That's what my CCW instructor said. When yeah, if, that's if why the shit is gonna go down, concealed carry. I, you ain't you ain't know you ain't know I had it when I was with you. I ain't got to show it. You ain't got to know. It just you know what I'm saying It's there. I know if it's needed. It ain't but you know what I'm saying a, a hand reach away, and you know this penis will still be here. When it's all said and done, is all I give a damn about. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. Let's this, get this into it, y'all. That's Lord all. Have mercy. Yeah, 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 but we don't want that penis to shoot nothing milky and white. We yeah, need that. We don't want the hot you up the club, you know. Yeah, we right. need. The right. club is closed right now. Mm-hmm. I'm too old to go to that club and shoot mm-hmm. it up. Mm-hmm. We don't want you shooting up the club. Right, and and and, and God <laughs> may love you, boy. You. It, it, don't let some stuff go down. I'm with my boy T Stream. Y'all done see what that yeah, boy? He had. not playing either. He's <laughs> he like, ain't playing. He <laughs> gonna be what it is. Yeah. Now, yeah, if you man. come to my house, hey, it's on like a pile of neck bones. Now you didn't walk into the the, the Terra Dome. Now you don't want to do that. It, I got you know what I'm saying little baby Rambo. I'm already on wheels. I mean, I'm ready for a drive by. I got a ramp uh, on your uh, ass. You know what I'm saying? Don't let me get the power chair. It's on. Hey, I'm hey on. look, <laughs> see Moochie, he's foreshadowing what's gonna happen if we ever get to see Rojas again. That's what he's telling us. If we get to see Rojas again, he already foreshadowed what's going to be happening. But ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Us. We are here to talk about... Good. Yeah, make me feel better. We are here to talk about We Own the City episode four. My favorite episode, not because I enjoy what happened, but because of the depth of what happened. And this episode pretty much focused on that damn Wayne Jenkins. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. John Barenthal, if John Barenthal don't get an Emmy nomination, a TV Emmy for playing the absolute... this was going to be good, boy. Bruh, and look, for all the people that follow us, for all the various shows we do, this show is just as heavy, just as entertaining, and a little bit more gritty than all the other shows we review. I don't know why some of y'all ain't clicking on it. Maybe it's because the first episode is very hard to get through. But once you figure out who's who, what's going on, you can't take your eyes off this chicanery. (laughs) I mean, this just pure, crooked chicanery. It is unreal. And before we go scene, before we do our little scene reviews of the clips and that poor midget, she didn't deserve that. Okay, yeah, that was messed honey, up, man. He honey, did honey, that, that midget, that midget, excuse that me, dwarf genius. lives matter. Dwarf <laughs> lives matter. He know goodness well he had to do that. And before we dive into he had a it, full size booty boy, I'm telling you. Hey, yeah. like my man said, <laughs> he said have, have that body weight and booty boy. I was you like, was looking at, you was looking at her <laughs> clapping. You was looking at her clap. Whoa, they got, they, was that was a lot of muscle back then. That gluteus maximus. Hey, wow, <laughs> Let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> she was, she was twerking black, black. in everything. Moochie. Yeah, that man, chick, boy. that chick was that, that <laughs> chick was three foot five, and all of it was hind part. Ooh, three foot boy. five, all hind two, part. Two foot five of it was was rump roast. <laughs> She was taller so, laying down than she was standing up. That ass was so yes, that big. That's right. That's right. So, Boy. Moochie, give us your overall review of this episode. Then I'm going to come to Jay. Then we'll go through the various clips that gave this show um, context. Well, you saw the dirty, dirty with them. Mm-hmm. And they gave the breakdown of why 
it was so easy. They they you learn you it's like not for nothing. If you watch the wire, it's just like Daniels was trying to school the younger younger officers. Like if you do if you follow this way, you're gonna be like this. If you teach in this way, you you'll be a cop like you know, he was just saying the various ways of what type of police officer that you can be. And look, they with the dirty, the, they all dirty, dirty, dirty. All of them. Now, the one thing yeah. you did have, Moochie, you have about, th you have three that experience working with Jenkins and the Gun Trace Task Force that they were dirty, but they wasn't pig in a blanket dirty. You know, they did have a conscience with theirs, but at the same time, they didn't stick up and say, you know what, he's doing wrong. And we'll get into why they didn't do that, because the guy that was recanting the story, right, officer, yeah, he let you know why more people didn't stand up and say nothing, why more people was afraid to say something because of the worries about their future. Having and said that, Jay Mo, I, yeah. go for it. I was going to say, that's why this show perfectly why they be saying it's a it's only a few bad cops and there's a lot of good cops but the good cops are handcuffed by standing up for any bad cop behavior he said he took the money he, he didn't want to be blackballed or you know thought of being a snitch or all of the other things that come with it being the good cop and standing up hoods and stuff and just let I don't know about that. Uh you should have went and just dropped it in a damn Salvation Army bucket or something. Uh, but but anyway, um yeah, good cops, man. Whatever they see, they can't say nothing because then they get shunned or put out to pasture like the one cop and all the other stuff is just really messed up. Right. So let, let me say this before we get into the scene review. I want to give a big shout out to everybody involved in this project. And I'm going to tell you why. Right now, politics and divide in this country, we're as polarized as we've ever been. But the polarization is moving in one direction that ain't the direction of truth. And you've got a, a party of people out here saying that just by telling their kids how br brutal slavery was, that that's critical race theory, okay? That's history. And you've got people that are probably calling this show the fuck out because for them, it's critical race theory when so many people who lived in Baltimore say, this is fact. This was a way of life. This is what they had to deal with. So shout out to the writers, the producers, the actors, HBO, and everybody that had enough courage to say, we need to put this out there for people to see. Hell, we don't care if they call it critical race theory. These are the facts. People need right. to know this so that they can want, demand, and try to get better amongst their communities. And having That's said true. that, man, let's true. get into it. Let's get into it. So the first clip I got to show y'all, you know, is that damn Wayne Jenkins. John Barenthal, I want to have an interview with you to tell you just how much I enjoyed you bringing this character to life. I can't see nobody else doing as great of a job as you. We start out with Wayne in the very beginning, killing someone. It was his fault. Make no mistake. This old grandpa got killed because of Wayne stinking Jenkins. Here we go. That's not Wayne Jenkins. Sorry. I wanted to get in with these guys. You know, you don't want to be blackballed. You don't want them to think you a snitch. And to be truthful, if I thought I could take that money and not get caught, I probably would have kept it. Mm. So they found yep. that money later, you saying? The $20,000. Mm -hmm. Right there in the grass. They sure did. I'm glad he left it where he said he did and they found it. Because I was worried about him because they thought he was lying. Deteriorate, you know, money will deteriorate too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that it was out there for a while, even if it wasn't a plastic, it'll be faded a little bit because of it'll right. start breaking stuff. apart and and uh, 
falling mm-hmm. apart. I know somebody that uh, was uh, involved in some stuff or whatever, and uh, they had some bunch of money buried, like a hundred thousand buried. And when they uh, and they didn't wrap it up right in like the plastic or whatever, when they went to go get it, it was all molded and falling apart, like it was ruined. Mm-hmm. It, it was like a year or two later, though. Like, a couple yeah, that's years what happened if you don't wrap it right. I know people yeah, that right. be putting it in walls and shit like that. I know people I that would that bury their the money. They bury their huh? money underneath where they keep their dog at. That, that ain't good been, either, though, because if, been, uh, if it, it, it uh, could um, America, you know. Gangster. So, oh on. yeah, that's what the guy did in American Gangster. You I didn't know that it, yeah, that's exactly what he did. I didn't know that money in the wall would deteriorate though, because that's inside a wall and nah, that shouldn't. No, I didn't say oh, it okay. did. I just said I knew oh, people okay. that did that. Right, right. I got you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but, when man, do you think we're gonna get to see? Though. Go ahead. When do y'all think we're gonna get to see suitors recant recant of what's going on? Or are we gonna get to see suitors recant? Next episode. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a first reaction for these last two episodes, man. I figure I didn't do one this episode. I figure I'm gonna wait these last two episodes. People should be ready by now. You know what I'm saying? And uh, mm-hmm. ready to watch. I wish people was watching this like they watch other shows because this is a damn good show and it's so real how everything is depicted. And uh, this tripped out. So a lot of times when police, uh, you in court. And they also show how nobody wanted to go to, uh, you know, court for the police or whatever. But uh, because police lie, and they show right here, yeah, and just like they show with the video or whatever. Um, he talking about we gonna make a movie and they hit it and then pried it open. They already took, so he said, leave a hundred in there and everything else in there. We gonna take and put it in this duffel bag and we gonna keep it. So they did that first. Then they closed the safe up and then acted like they opened it for the first time and found that money in there. And then they could use it as evidence. This is how we opened it. This is all we found in there. You lie and saying it was more money in there because you just want to try to, you know, get more money from the police or say this or say that. And so it makes it look as if, you know, the police never do no wrong. And that's just messed up because this is obviously not the case. And what can that dude do? He got no recourse, really. There's no way that they can do it. They also showed them rob some people earlier. And uh, he I don't know if you got the clip, but he told him to pull the car up to block the cameras. Yep. They robbed mm-hmm. him. Talking about you're going to get a letter in the mail saying that this was a stop from federal stop, this, that, and the other. And his whole point was to rob them. And even mm-hmm. the dudes knew, like, man, I bet you they took every damn thing. But what could they do? You know what I'm saying? Nothing. You're right. What, you going to fight the police back or shoot them? Now you're really in trouble. You know what I'm yep. saying? And then, mm-hmm. you know, they could get you with drug money and drug sales. So it's either go to jail or let them rob you. Or if mm-hmm. you fight back or shoot them, now you're really going to jail. You know what I'm saying? So it's no win for them. And that's why they, a lot of people let the police rob them because they don't have no other options. Exactly. But that, yeah, but that's why people don't trust the police because when you are robbing people and doing all this other criminal activity, lying and stuff on people, then you just as bad. You you're no longer the good guys. You you are in the gray area. Yeah, you may be getting guns and drugs off the streets. But you also getting people killed, just like we saw last episode when they stole that money, and then that ended up getting dude killed. You know, yeah, you know, he, he didn't realize how much harm he was doing. Right, and I think it messed his head up too once once he saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's because he ain't had nothing to say. He just sat back and looked like, okay, damn. But uh, you know. They they think that they can they it's they right to take that money because they justify and that's the thing with people people find ways to justify behaviors they want to do you know whether mm-hmm. it's cheating on your wife or you know sleeping with many people or robbing a midget or robbing 
drug dealers or whatever, they got ways to justify that behavior to make it seem right. And that ain't true. That ain't right. You know, right. Uh, just like I'll right. be justifying, just like I'll be justifying eating ice cream at two o'clock in the morning. That shit is not right, man. It's not right. <laughs> Not right. When you're trying to get these cuts for the sluts, you can't be eating no ice cream at two o'clock in the morning. Ain't nothing right about that. We can't help it if it was calling you to the fridge. Cheating on your diet over there, man. Yeah, I'm cheating, man. I was cheating. It was calling. It was talking to me like Amari talking, talking, talking to me. That's what it was doing. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, it was. But um, Jmo, are you gonna do anything on your channel tonight? <clears throat> yeah, um, tonight. Because I've been doing this for a while, for the last like two months, Real Talk Tuesdays, where we talk about, you know, different relationship issues and things uh, with my girl Kelly Lee. And so uh, tonight we're going to talk about is it all right for women to want a man that make a certain amount of money as one of their main uh, things that they judging the man by? Because I got this article where this woman was saying, uh, she need a man making over a hundred thousand a year, and even that ain't enough money. And what if the man ain't making that much money, but he love you and ready to do all these other things? Is that right to say because you don't make this certain amount of money, you ain't no good? Because as men, men if they really feeling a woman and love that woman. They won't say, well, I won't be with her because she don't make 100000 a year. Men sometimes will be with a woman that don't even got a job. A lot of times. Yeah, you know? but our, quote, our quota for a woman typically is different from a woman's quota from a man. Our quota is we need right, to have right. our eyeballs stimulated somehow. And right. Somehow. Either you got to have a fat butt, busted face, or you got to have a great face, no ass, or you got to have a combination of all of that. And we'll work with you. And right. these women, these women that get with these dudes is making six figures plus. There comes a mentality with that, and nobody want to hear your ass complaining when that dude got like six women. But you, your main priority for the guy was his money. But I ain't gonna go into all that. I'm gonna let y'all go. By the way, the rewatch party is with Moochella and Miss K for the wire. Talk about it, Moochie. Yeah, we're doing the rewatch. We're on the season finale of season one, and we are talking about that tonight on Rewind That with Miss K. Mm. And before we go, Jay, if you found 20 G's, you going to keep it or you going to be like Clark Kent and turn it in? Man, of course I'm going to be like, I'm going to keep it. Shit. <laughs> Man, ain't no way I would turn that money in. I ain't about to try to find out who it is or none of that. I'm keeping that money. I ain't lying. And as a young person, I actually found some money. It wasn't no damn 20 Gs. It was about maybe three, $400. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I was happy as hell, boy. And uh, I bought my first Jordans with that. I was real young, like in sixth grade or fifth grade or something when I got that. <laughs> and I bought the black Jordan 4s with that money. Me and my friend, we found the money. And what it was was, because uh, looking back on it now, you know the little envelope you get when you get your money from the bank? Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody must have dropped their little paycheck or something oh. from the bank. It was blowing in the grass right by this car, and we was going to the uh, arcade, and I saw it and took that money, split it up, and bounced, boy, the hell with the arcade. Boy. He bought a starter coat and a, a, a fitted hat, and I bought some Jordans. Dang. And he was <laughs> you, you, was they, you took Damn, somebody's they money. Paycheck. You took somebody's money that they had for their baby Pampers, and they baby breast milk, and you took mm -hmm. it. The damn baby probably had to go stay with grandma for the weekend. You just ruined hey, it. Damn right. That's the way. <laughs> that's the way life goes, baby. <laughs> damn, one, Janet Jackson. One, <laughs> one I, I found money before at work, but I turned it in. No. What? I had yeah, to I had to. Yo, you don't know you bus? being set up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know you being set up. So, Moochie, you if you. Are. Moochie, if you in the cameras, woods, the, if, if it's you, cameras if you, and stuff like that, nah, I'm turning so it So, Moochie, if you walking in but the woods. look, they, they give you to a certain amount of time, and then if nobody come claim that money, it's yours. Did you get it? <laughs> she got the <laughs> money. See, sometimes it don't, 
it don't pay now. If I found money like that in the grass, in the woods, and somewhere like that, no, I can't yeah. picking it up. See, uh, when I was um, about, to, I was part owner of this cleaners when I was younger, and before I was part owner, um, we used to, I used to do all the work there too, and so uh, we would go through the clothes when somebody bring it because we would, we would set up downtown. And we would charge like double and triple the price. And we would take all the stuff down to the south side and have them wash it or whatever. So one of the things we would have to do is like put the check little the orders pockets. together and check the pockets. And this one person, uh, I guess he was the dope boy or whatever. He always was driving a new Lexus, this, that, and the other. This is in, in 2000. Uh, and so or 99, it was either 99 or 2000. He probably got a lot of money in there, too. He had a thousand dollars cash in his pocket, mm. and I kept all of that. And he never asked for it, never questioned it, nothing. He probably don't even and, remember he left that in there. And I was so happy for it because I kept mm. all that, all that money. We found all mm. kind of stuff, man. One time, somebody, uh, the doorman from the building next to us he uh and i always knew it was something up with him because he had a little you know crackhead tooth but uh <laughs> he ended up getting his uh, uniform washed and we found a, a little rizok in there he, he left a little piece a little boulder up in there and what uh -uh. we would do normally we had little bags that we would attach to your clothes if we find stuff in the pockets I ain't never gonna put the thousand dollars in that bag and give it back to you, but no, you put so, the rock so back, man, right? He gave him his rock, rock back, back right? in the bag and gave it back to him. He was like, Oh shoot, thank you. Wow. <laughs> he always looked at us a little weird after that, like they know I smoke crack. Right, right. <laughs> I told her, don't do it. I'm like, don't put that in there and give it back. She's like, no, nah, I'm going to give it back to him. I'm like, man, don't get this dude no rock in the bag. What the hell? And she gave it back to him. And uh, sure enough, he always, he used to be all bubbly, like, hey, how y'all doing? Hey, it's a good day. This and that. Yeah, because now y'all know his little secret. Yeah, after that, he'd be like, oh, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> Well, y'all, that is as good a place to end this. Hope you enjoyed our review. We Own the City, episode four. It's getting good. Even though it's about to go off, we're still going to follow it. J-Mo going to post a video, early reaction. Stay true to Moochie. She's going to be around doing stuff with the wire, keeping things hot. I'll be back tomorrow interviewing someone else. And my review was will be up for the show tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to be interviewing someone who's a background person on the show. So tune in to me tomorrow at 9 p.m. to that next sex is hell video. I'll see y'all. Ew. Deuce.